So you've showed me doing uh, detailed work on a frame from this animation sequence, mm -hmm. but that's an animation sequence or a separate set of models. But could mm -hmm. I actually animate the texture over time? Sure. We, we also allow you to put um, individual frames of animation into the, the timeline per channel. And the thinking behind this is it opens up a, a whole bunch of uh, different effects to the look dev or the texture artists, which were main, uh, previously the, the domain of the shader artists. Yeah. So, for example, complex uh, inter-object uh, interactions. So you have a, uh, a creature being scratched or you have a, um, an object that's being you know, beaten up. And o over time, you know, paint will flake off or mud will go onto the surface. And previously, you would maybe have to do that in a, a complicated shader setup with reveals. Um, now you can actually just use your uh, artists to go in there and, and, and paint and preview the, uh, the results. Brilliant. So I could uh, paint up a succession of frames and have that just be different snapshots on the same thing, or mm -hmm. I could actually just animate that over time on my timeline uh, through through the same UI? Sure. Um, we'd probably recommend just using the, the animation uh, timeline for animation because we, we do uh, allow artists to make different variations of their channels incredibly easily uh, for, for very little cost. So, for example, if I wanted to make a, a different uh, variant of my color channel to maybe try out an, an idea that I've had, I come in here, um, hit duplicate channel, and now I've got a new version to work with, even though that's probably four gigs of, of, of textures there that I've just uh, cloned. Brilliant. Okay, so what if I wanted to maybe uh, hide some geometry or um, so I, because it's blocking something else? I mean, how hard is it to manipulate things like that? Sure. I mean, it's, it's really easy. We have a, uh, a mode where you just select the, uh, the geometry that you want hidden. And that's now um, selected, and I can just hide, and that geometry disappears. It won't uh, be projected onto. I can get behind the, uh, the geometry to fix some details. Punching the teeth out of T-Rexes is uh, <laughs> something you like to do twice before breakfast. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that I'm a tasteless hack and I say, mm -hmm. look, this is all very well and good, but um, this is very grey and not very interesting. I mean, I, what sort of filtering or colour work can I do on the whole thing, I suppose, on an individual pad? Sure, we've got a bunch of, uh, of pretty powerful um, uh, colour correction uh, filters with uh, a real-time preview. So, if, say, for example, I wanted to you know, kind of jazz the, the T-Rex up a little bit. Um, I can come in here and sort of do a, a shift towards green. Um, I can uh, adjust some of the, the individual levels. And I've, got, I've, I've got pretty fine grain control um, over how the color correction will be applied. Okay, so can we just play that? And I want to see that now as the director. I want to see that as a, an animation, see a, a whole clip like that. Can I do that? Sure. If you uh, hold on one second, I can come back out here. I can start the clip playing. And I can come in here and I can apply the, the hue shift while the um, the animation's playing, so I can actually check that what looks good statically actually looks good dynamically. And when I'm, I'm happy with this, I can, I can then apply this filter. So, Jack, what about working with multiple objects? Because that can be problematic. Um, sure. We've designed Mari to intrinsically allow painting on multiple objects with different sets of uh, shaders and different sets of textures. The, the whole idea behind that is really to allow um, uh, painting in context. Mm. Because if you have um, an object, it's not going to be living in isolation. It's not going to be sitting, you know, uh, floating in space. So it will be sitting on a table. It will be sitting on a shelf. It will be uh, in an environment. And uh, we found that balancing that was actually quite a, a tricky uh, task. If you are only seeing the table without the lamp on top of it and without a book, you know, nesting on it. So in terms of you know balancing a scene, being able to pull in all of the textures at once and see um, that it, it all fits together is incredibly useful. You know, it seems to me just hearing you talk and watching it that because of its perhaps lineage with Weta, it seems like a very open system. Um, yeah, we're, we're very kind of production and workflow oriented. So we're, we're very aware that Mari will be sitting within a, a pipeline. So there'll be data coming in in one format, there'll be data going out in another format. Um, there may be requirements for specialist model uh, formats to be supported. Uh, and even to the extent of writing um, custom shaders, which you can just write in uh, GLSL, which is a uh, standard uh, shader language. Uh, they can be included and just added in as modules. So if you have a, a preview of your subsurface on your skin, for example, 
Um, we don't ship with that, but if you have technical people in your company, you can uh, get them to write a, a shader and it just drops in and you can now see your textures in context. You know, what, what sort of is, I guess, one of the hot areas that came about uh, when Disney went open source is the uh, PTEX stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you guys looked at that at all? Sure. We, we have uh, basic support for PTEX in there. We can uh, load objects without UVs. We can um, bring in PTEX files and, and see them and paint on them. Oh, great. Um, and now that'll be in version one? Um, the functionality to do that will be in, in version one. We'll be looking to talk to people to find out how they want PTEX to fit into their workflows. But on a, on, a, on, a, on a technical level, we have a, a solution. So, Bill, is this going to be, we said it's a separate product, but is this going to be still used by Weta? What's the relationship with Weta? Do you own it? Is it something that... Uh, we have, yeah, we have an ongoing relationship with Weta. So Weta will still have development engineers working on Mari and specific aspects of Mari to look at um, future Weta productions. We get access to all the technology to incorporate it into the production of releases of Mari. So there'll be actually be two engineering teams working very closely together. And Jack, you in fact moved from Weta, where mm -hmm. you were in, involved with this, to being the product manager for the foundry for this. Sure, I'm, uh, I'm the lead engineer of, of uh, Mari, um, and I've been uh, developing it uh, at Weta for four years, and now I've shifted over to the, the foundry to kind of continue its development and make sure that the, the roadmap going forwards is exactly where it needs to be for uh, ongoing productions. So in every respect, this is going to be like the other products at the Foundry have successfully moved from being a proprietary product to a sort of a general Foundry product that is available to anyone. Yeah, we want it to fit in exactly how the others have done. So it's really important to us. We keep very close collaboration with the post-production house and Weta in this case that created it and made it. But we also need to listen to all the other customers now that we hope will be using it over the coming years. And I think it's something the Foundry, we're really quite proud of, the amount of time we spend out with customers, listening to customers and getting their feedback to drive the direction of all our products. So, I mean, I think this is really impressive, but Bill, what is it going to put me back to get one of these? Because, quite frankly, is, is this like thousands of dollars per No, um, the price hasn't been fully fixed yet and won't be until we actually get to get to the release version, but we're expecting it to be around £500. Okay, and I guess the other big question is, when will I be able to get my hands on it? If I'm not uh, a beta tester or working, obviously, in Weta, <laughs> um, you know, when is it going to be available that someone could actually get a copy? We're hoping to have a public beta very soon after NAB, so really quite soon now we should be able to get it out and uh, you should be able to start playing with it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.